Hello, this is Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio here with a very interesting uh, interesting video for you. A uh, very, very interesting video. So, uh, I've discussed this quite a bit. I wrote an article on it for Adventures in Illinois Higher Education in January. Uh, but it's the consent and respect. Uh, I'll just read this email for you uh, and for those who aren't aware. Welcome to the Illinois State University community. Consent and respect online campus violence awareness program is now available for you. All Illinois State University students are required to complete consent and respect. This course will promote bystander awareness and help prevent sexual assault. In order to comply with federal mandates and regulations, all Illinois State University students, which includes anyone enrolled, for, uh, any, anyone enrolled in classes for at least one credit hour, are expected to complete consent and respect once each school year. This course takes approximately 30 minutes to complete and is available 24-7. You can start and stop as needed, yada, yada, yada. You have a due date and all that good stuff. So... Uh, I guess the first thing I want to mention is that uh, um, it appears that they've uh, shortened uh, shortened the time that this uh, test takes to complete. Uh, it was two hours last year. I, I emailed them and complained. You can find all the screenshots of those emails in that uh, in the previous article. I'll link that in the description below. Uh, but yeah, it used to be two hours. Now it's 30 minutes. So that's good. That's why I've decided to go ahead and screen capture this because obviously uh, no one's going to sit there and watch a two-hour test. And uh, I'll move quickly through it as I did as I did uh, last uh, last semester. Uh, I guess the other I guess maybe lie that they're that they're kind of propagating. Uh, once a year, it's been eight months. It's been eight months since I've taken this. Uh, and I guess an observation that I had yesterday when I posted a uh, status on it, uh, a fascist book status on my personal page. Uh, it appears that uh, uh, college students need to be reminded every eight months or so that uh, raping is bad. Okay, raping is bad. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is just screen capture the entire thing. I'll take you through the entire process. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, I think you probably will. Uh, <clears throat> seems like uh, things that in college continue to get progressively worse. So even though they've shortened it, I'm sure there will still be some some very, very uh, interesting things. I'll go actually before I before I get into that. Here's here's the article I mentioned, Adventures in Illinois Higher Education, Federally Mandated Alcohol and Sexual Violence Online Courses. Uh, as you as you can see, or as you saw here, they say it's federally and state right, state uh, mandated, but uh, I was unable to find anything uh, anything that uh, that said that. Uh, and even the uh, I got pushed up to like the vice president of, of, of Illinois State University, some higher up in, in, in their bureaucracy, and uh, he was even unaware or he was even unable to give me an actual. Uh, uh, citation or, or anything of the sort. The most I was able to find is a Department of Education letter, and it, it essentially just specified that uh, colleges must take some action to promote sexual vi or sexual violence awareness. Doesn't say what that is. So I guess this is what Illinois State is pushing forward as their as so that they can comply with these with these uh, uh, regulations uh, and, and mandates. So let's go ahead and get okay. Started. And I was going to show you the login process and all that, but apparently they don't let you just sign in like they did last year. I actually had to get a confirmation email, but here we are. This is uh, uh, the, the main screen for starting the course. It looks like I might not have to take alcohol wise this year, which kind of, damn it, got a beer out, cheers. Uh, so I could uh, lie about all the answers while drinking a beer. But uh, uh, but yeah, it looks like it'll just be consent and respect, so your, uh, your SJW-esque stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this course. So, your Redbird life offers numerous opportunities and responsibilities, yada, yada, yada. Uh, in response to changes in Title IX and the federal requirements for universities as prescribed by the Campus, as prescribed by the campus SAVE Act and Violence Against Women's Act reauthorization, all students will be required to complete an online training course addressing important issues such as bystander empowerment, sexual consent, sexual assault, relationship violence, and stalking. First thing I want to mention here, and I should have had this prepared beforehand, but uh, <clears throat> here in this article, I obviously exchanged some emails with uh, with these, uh, with this, uh, with some Illinois State University uh, bureaucrats, but uh, uh, this is uh, the Department of Education letter I mentioned. Um, and uh, in addition to ensuring full compliance with Title IX, schools should take proactive measures. Uh, so should, uh, and as most of you are aware, when it's when it's when it's a legal document, uh, it's, it says must, or there, there's some sort of verbiage that uh, makes it a requirement. But they should take proactive measures. Uh, and that was in uh, that was in that letter, uh, and I wasn't able to find anything else. 
Uh, so I don't know if this is coming from federal, state, or from the university. I really don't know. But nonetheless, uh, <laughs> neither did the people at Illinois State University. So uh, not sure if that's completely accurate, but nonetheless, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and get this going. Okay. And where is the submit button? Can I just go forward here? Next. Okay. This course is intended to encourage all students to actively create a safe and healthy campus climate. Here we go. And we urge you to be part of that movement. <laughs> your voice, your experience, and your perspective matter in promoting a culture that stands up to sexual violence. If you have experienced some form of sexual violence or harassment, we hope this program helps you to continue to gain closure on your past experiences and to support others in your community. Above all, remember, one, you are not to blame for what happened. Two, Victim blaming. <laughs> do what you need to heal. Seek counseling with friends, family, and others. Three, think about safety planning if necessary. This program. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to have. program focuses on important nice. issues and. Yeah, we're just going to have her uh, uh, stop talking. I just wanted to give you. Yeah, they even have it narrated. So let's uh, go ahead. And your opinion. I under er, One, I understand what consent means. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I have the tools I need to keep myself safe. Well, um, unsure. Actually, no, I disagree. I disagree because on campus you can't have firearms. So, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that. That's one uh, uh, one measure of uh, of safety that is uh, that is gone. Feel confident about, about my ability to be an active, helpful bystander. Sure, why not? I have the tools I need to help keep my friends safe. Well, I don't talk to anyone at school, so well, there's that. Uh, I'm aware of the Title IX and sexual assault resources that my campus provides. They're all over freaking campus, so you can't miss them. Uh, I could help a survivor or survivor of sexual assault. I don't know. I've never had to do that. And let's go ahead and move forward. What else do we have here? Uh, <laughs> before we get started in lesson one, you'll, ask to, you'll be asked to complete this short quiz and what you know about the different as aspects of consent and respect. This quiz, quiz score does not count toward your final exam. And, oh, yeah, you have to get, like... Uh, 80% or something. Oh, boy. Uh, is it consensual? Select all that apply. Oh, boy. My partner didn't say yes, but didn't say no either. My partner and I agree. My partner and I made clear to each other that we were both interested. Well, that's kind of obvious. In a sexually violent situation, bystanders can. Uh, intervene to defuse a potentially dangerous situation. Challenge social norms that support sexual violence. <clears throat> All of the support of survivor. Yeah, uh, this is this is one of the one. This is one of the rape rape violence bullshit. No one tolerates this. No one tolerates this. Uh, so yeah, uh, social norm that supports sexual violence. No, that's so rare. That is so rare. Asking someone who is at risk, then you'd help, is a positive and safe strategy for active bystanders. <coughs> okay. Which of these characteristics, or which of these are characteristics of a healthy relationship? Supporting one another, keeping one another from spending time. Uh, that's kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> understanding each other's need for space and privacy. Uh, being able to share your thoughts and ideas without fear of criticism. Forms of intimate partner violence include being aware of partners' likes and dislikes. Uh, no. Destroying property, embarrassing them. Yeah. A rape myth is a prejudicial, stereotyped, or false belief about rape, rape victims, and rapists. <sighs> sure, I guess. Person asleep or dr asleep, drugged, unconscious, or blacking out. They are not capable of giving consent. Uh, yep, I guess uh, that's what they want to know. Uh, ways to prevent evidence after preserve evidence after a sexual assault include avoid bathing, wash all clothes. No, you don't want to wash your clothes. Don't change your clothes. Uh, no. Yeah, as you can see, this is just pretty. Ba this is kind of bad stuff. I'll probably I'll probably at some point stop the video and get to some some better stuff but uh, when a partner threatens to hurt themselves to gain control uh, as a form of intimate partner violence sure if you're in an abusive relationship one of the most important things you can do is get help true great test see how i did 100 percent because it's so goddamn difficult okay <clears throat> oh god she can start talking again thankfully no okay skip this not important oh same image as last year okay consent they can have a nice little video too. Oh, what is boy. consent in a sexual situation? <laughs> consent is clear verbal or nonverbal permission for specific sexual activity. 
Consent must be voluntarily and freely given by all parties to a sexual interaction. You have the right to give consent, and you have the obligation to get consent. Even if one partner gives permission, if they are giving it under threat or duress, or as the result of coercive pressure, it is not consent. Consent must also be clearly understood by all parties. The clearest way to express consent is through verbal communication. No means no. Stop means no. Wait means no. Silence means no. A sincere and enthusiastic yes means yes. But you'll still need to communicate about what you and your partner are consenting to. Because consent to one form of sexual activity cannot imply consent to other forms of sexual activity. In addition, either party can withdraw consent at any time by communicating it clearly. It is also important to remember to pay attention to your partner's body language. Does your partner seem uncomfortable? Are they pulling away? Is there some hesitation? If you are ever unclear, ask. Well, thank you very much, douchebag. I was unaware of all of that stuff. Okay, can we move forward now, thankfully? Understanding alcohol oh, and consent. Stop. Most people agree that giving and receiving consent while under the influence of alcohol or drugs is more complex than when sober. When a person is under the influence of alcohol... Thank God. Okay, uh, yeah, obvious stuff. Come on. Let's move forward. I already answered this damn question. True. Come on, let's go. <clears throat> Super Campus redundant. codes differ in their def- Shh, shut up. Uh, okay. Don't care. It wasn't- My partner didn't resist. Shut up. <laughs> my is partner it, didn't resist is it consensual it wasn't our first time together my partner didn't resist no, use caution sense. just because your partner didn't resist oh my god I have to keep, keep it wasn't our that. first time it wasn't our first time use caution I didn't I didn't stop silence is not consent. silence is not A consent. Lack of shut up Oh, there's more slides. Damn it. Is it consensual? Yes. My part go. I went ahead anyway be I went stop. He said no at first, but eventually said yes. He I don't know. Use caution. Of guys I would say no. If your partner <laughs> I had a couple of drinks, but I was still in control. She stop. People respond to an assault. I had a use caution. Alcohol complicates consent. Go. You have received Go. consent. But remember, pay. Okay, is it consensual? Here we go. Uh, partner and I agreed, made it clear, submit. Let's move forward. <laughs> Making what are some things that you would be willing to health? Okay, let's see. Uh, what I'm thinking she would that you'd be willing to do to make consent a part of your sexual health. Stop when yes. my partner says no. I'm sorry, Stop. guys. Uh, question whether my partner can consent if either one of us is under the influence. Question whether my partner can consent. <sighs> the way this is set up is really frustrating. Uh, get consent even if my partner... Uh, yeah, sure. Get consent e Hush. Ask, are you okay with doing this before uh, doing something different? Do Ask, you know? are you okay with this? Take what my partner says at face value. Check in and see if my partner... Treat my partner with respect and cons- Make sure that my partner is okay, rather than assuming- Okay, so that's pretty simple. Hey, there's number- well, it's pretty quick. This will, this will go pr pretty quickly, I think. F okay, here we go. Another one of their animations. What a nice guy, he filled up her drink. Uh, it was obviously sarcasm. But, uh, alright, there you got to see one of their, their cool animations. Bystanders. Witnesses to- Uh, okay, yeah, we're just gonna skip this. No questions here. In the following situation- 
Okay, rank your likelihood of intervening from most likely to least likely. So now we're getting to some personal questions. Testify when I have information uh, in a sexual assault case, even my friend may be the perpetrator. Uh, I don't know. I'll just put it very likely. Intercede when you know, it seems like a life lifeboat situation's a little bit. Uh, Offer to help and find. Re <clears throat> sure. Actually, I'm just going to prefer not to answer in all these. Helps. Confront, help a rape survivor, help a, help a, help and, and this is how you get help. things done quickly. <laughs> Based on your feedback, you are mo most comfortable supporting. What if the survivor was your mother, brother? Uh, okay, yeah, what if, what if, what if. Bystanders can do all of the above things. Great. And let's move forward again. I complete this one too. It's lagging a little bit. Bystander strategies. Okay. Uh, first step to come in, engage bystanders, recognizing when a situation is potentially dangerous or unacceptable. Uh, a lot of strategies. Some are non non uh, non confrontational. Um, use can a I just safe. Skip all these. Use a. Asks. Use by. Created. <laughs> Call 911 or a campus resource. Hey, hell yeah. The strategies below. Okay, nice. We'll just continue forward. Why not, right? <laughs> Discuss it later. For who? Nice. This last set of bystander strategies. <laughs> uh, step in and take personal action. Okay. Interrupt. Confront someone. For who? Friends or strangers? And let's continue. In a recent forward. study, 87% of male. Oh, what are we going to talk about that? In a recent study, 87% of male students reported they had no sex, no history of sexual aggression. In another study, only two and a half percent of college men reported committing sexual assault. Assault. 90% of college women in the study had experienced sexual assault, suggesting that men who commit sexual assault repeat this offensive behavior. Uh, most college men choose to have sex with consent, do not force or coerce sex from their partners. So, when it comes to sexual violence, since most men are not perpetrators, what is their role or what can it be? Now, see, I think this is another example. I mean, it's it's very, very marginal. Uh, most men aren't just aggressive assholes like most feminists will make you believe. Uh, but I, I, I said this last year in, or last or last semester in this article. But uh, I mean, uh, when, when it comes to the, I, I took the alcohol wise one, too. But now that the federal government's putting in all these regulations, I mean, eh, maybe we'll see this number go up. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but we'll we'll just have to see. We're going to skip past this. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very marginal, and every student is required to do this. We have a big so. problem, and we say. need your help. It's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters. Our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault, and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent, or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault, it's a crime. It's wrong. If I saw it happening and I was taught you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, <laughs> I speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect. It's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual oh, assault. Jesus Christ. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. Wow, so powerful, so powerful. I mean, they got they got, even got some of the uh, political rulers. You know, rape's bad, but murdering millions of of uh, brown folks and uh, brown children overseas is perfectly acceptable. All right, let's see another one of these knowledge checks. Which the following are active bystander strategies: call campus police, confront the person, uh, tell someone in position of authority. Obviously, how can a person become an advocate and stand against sexual violence by being part of the solution? Uh. <laughs> by speaking up, showing respect, whatever. Submit. Let's keep, keep moving forward. Okay, let's go. And we'll skip through these just for the sake of time. Oh, here we go. <laughs> What's up with Gene? <laughs> Which strategy would you like to use in this situation? I don't know. Sure, we'll go with you that. You chose one. to act. 
Another video. <laughs> what was that all about? I don't know. We were at a party last night. Guess I had too much to drink. So I really don't remember too much. What's the big deal? <laughs> I think something happened when I asked about it, we started fighting. Something happened? What do you mean? Wait a minute. Are you saying you were raped? <laughs> not really sure. Well, not to sound like a victim blaming person here, but I've said it many times before. Uh, well, if, when people put themselves in these situations, uh, there is some sort of uh, personal responsibility there. So, uh, Which yeah. strategy would you like to use in this situation? Sure, we'll go with that You one. chose to tell someone... Oh, there's another scenario. I'm just, I'm just gonna skip, uh, can I skip through this? Damn it, can't. Bastards. Hey. Hey, Chris, what's up? What a good friend. Which additional bystander strategy would you like to use in this? Sure, you chose to create a. Next one. How many are there? Oh yeah, partying. Oh. She's hot. <laughs> oh man. Which, Which strategy, strategy would, like you would you like to use in this? Is there... <laughs> I don't see anything bad about that. I mean, yeah, commenting on her good looks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's no action here, so... Uh, uh, language and choices with him later on. Use body language to show disapproval. Interrupt. None of these things, probably. <laughs> I don't know. You chose to interrupt. Oh my god. Come on. I didn't get some action tonight. Oh man. Which strategy would you like to use in this situation? You know. chose to call a cab for. My standards in action. Do you actually have to click all these? Thank goodness. Okay. What percent of students are willing to intervene for a friend? <clears throat> uh, zero percent. Which percent of students are willing to intervene for a stranger? Zero. So everyone's a shitty person. If you're like most students, you didn't. No more. It's none of my business. Oh, here's no the more. Propaganda he didn't again. mean it. No more. Not my problem. No more. She was flirting with him. No more. She was asking for it. No more. Boys will be boys. No more. I'll say something next time. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. No more. <clears throat> and gotta love government. Another government program. Is this over yet? Thank you. This is brutal, guys. This is brutal. Okay, personal pledge. You've already indicated that you use some of these strategies. Which others are, are you willing? Are you would you be willing to commit to next time? Uh, let's see. Can I just skip past this part and sound like a real asshole? Personal pledge. You've all print my personal pledge. There's number two. Rape myths fall into four general categories. Ooh, this will get interesting. She asked for it. He didn't mean to. It wasn't really rape. She lied. Here are some of the myths that fall into the she asked for it category. If a girl is raped while she is drunk, she is at least somewhat responsible for letting things get out of hand. When girls go to parties wearing slutty clothes, they are asking for... Hey, I, I, whoops, I guess, uh, I guess, uh... Uh, that's a rape myth, what I just said earlier, but, you know, uh, uh, personal responsibility, taking uh, responsibility for your actions, apparently out of the question. Uh, apparently it's out of the question. Slutty clothes, if you're acting like a slut, eventually she's going to get into trouble. Uh, because uh, if a girl in the shade's kissing or hooking up, she'd not be surprised if guys assume she wants to have sex. 
<sighs> again, no personal responsibility. It's they're 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 just the, they're just the victims, and they couldn't have done anything differently to prevent the situation. The following video was created by college students to spread the message that victims oh, aren't asking for it. To Trump. These are not valid arguments. The victim of sexual assault are never to blame. Hashtag not asking for it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I can Here's watch some of the myths. She lied category. A lot of times girls who say they're raped agree to have sex and then regret it. Rape accusations are often accused as a way of getting back at guys. A lot of times girls who say they were raped often let the guy on and they had regrets. A lot of times girls who claim they were raped have emotional problems. Girls who are caught cheating on their boyfriend sometimes claim it was rape. Now, uh, uh, now that does happen. Uh, so it's, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily uh, a myth. Obviously rape happens, but uh, it has happened before where, they, where they've lied about being raped and the guy's gotten hammered down for it. I, I know there is one example I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can, you can find plenty of examples of that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we'll just go ahead and move forward there. Here are some of the myths that fall. He didn't mean to. Uh, it wasn't really rape. Okay, we'll just skip forward through that. Rape is not an act. Rape is not an act of passion, but a crime of aggression. It is motivated primarily by anger, power, and control. Well, no fucking shit. Undetected rapist. Okay, I'll skip forward through that. Don't believe the excuses. Don't believe the myths. We'll watch a few seconds well, of this, and I'll just skip through drunk. it. Boys will be boys. I'm sure they'll work it out. He warned her. She was asking for it. Why doesn't she just leave? It's time to end domestic violence and sexual assault once and for all. Oh, that was a short one. So, go ahead and move forward. <clears throat> Come on. So they said it'd take 30 minutes. And uh, I've skipped through quite a bit. Now oh, it's taking a second to load. Shitty program. <clears throat> Come on. Sorry for the delay, but as you can see, guys, it's, uh, I mean, how obvious is all this stuff? Really? And, uh, sexual and, assault statistics. Shut up. Every two. And, uh, I mean, you, you kind of, uh, uh, something kind of propagated is, uh, I mean, I mean, it's kind of propagated by, by women that, uh, men don't know how to not rape. But, uh, even they admit in this, in this, uh, in this training that it barely, like, two and a, was it two and a half percent of men actually commit sexual assault? So, yeah, this is all very, very obvious to uh, ninety-eight percent of people, almost. So, uh, yeah, it seems like a waste of time, uh, uh, time and uh, money and effort putting together this course. But this is a private uh, organization, so I'm sure they got uh, paid a quite a quite a good sum, and I'm sure some of it was subsidized too. I, I looked uh, last last semester. I dug into this uh, organization some, and I couldn't find anything anything uh, uh, worth mentioning. But uh, we're just gonna move through that. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. So, yeah, okay. Illinois State Code. Uh, we're not going to read that. Is it rape? I didn't resist physically. I My partner oh. was drunk. Okay, is it rape? My partner was drunk. <clears throat> My... That's if rape. You were a... I don't... Inability... I thought no, but I didn't say it. I thought no. I thought... If you didn't say no because you were scared for your life or safety, then it is most likely I rape. Could I didn't resist physically. I I just I was I, I did my, my part. Did you okay? Consent? So if so, if either side is drunk, apparently it's rape. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> increasing and decreasing risk. Let's see risk factors, protective fa uh, protective factors. Okay, all that stuff's obvious. Come on, where are we almost done with this? A study of over a... Th Ooh, here we go. Oh, and this is where they're going to ask about... Uh, they might ask about drinking here. Uh, very strong relationship between frequency of heavy episodic drinking and experiencing incapacitated rape. Female four or more standard drinks or male five or more standard drinks within a two-hour period. <clears throat> wow, then most people I know are fucked. Uh, 
Wow. Uh, yeah, four drinks for a woman, a woman, five for a man. Yeah, I don't know how. That doesn't seem very accurate. But the uh, odds of experiencing rape when too intoxicated to consent. One episode of HED equals three times higher. Among first-year college women, about three times as many reported rape or attempted rape connected with heavy alcohol use versus the use of force. The odds of experiencing rape when too intoxicated to consent increase. Half of sexual assault incidents occur when the victim, the perpetrator, or both have been drinking alcohol or using drugs. <clears throat> Uh, okay, knowledge check. Maybe we're almost done with this one. Just the following factors protects person against sexual violence, uh, having a higher number of casual relationships or hookups, uh, lower drinking or staying sober, staying with a group of friends. Having fewer rape myth beliefs protects a person against sexual violence. That doesn't make any damn sense. What? Uh, okay, so having fewer rape myth beliefs therefore protects you against sexual violence. Uh, seems like, uh, uh, the premise uh, seems like the inclusion doesn't follow the premise there to me, but uh, whatever. Uh, half of sexual assault incidents occur when the victim, the perpetrator, both been drinking alcohol or using drugs. Sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's move forward. Hopefully, you're done with that one. Resistance strategies. Resistance. In order from most to non-forceful physical force. In a situational. Fa what about shooting your attacker in self-defense? Oh, wait. You in a sample of over nine... Uh, one case of drug facilitated rape was reported in 2009 study of college students. Here are some proactive strategies that you can use to reduce your risk of drug facilitated drug violence, uh, sexual violence, excuse me. Refuse to accept unwanted drinks. Uh, set a limit on the number of alcohol drinks you'll have. Stick to your limits for alcohol consumption even if someone else is buying. Uh, all drinks, keep them in closed container in view and... Pour your own, uh, pour your own drinks when possible. Uh, there's one thing I want to mention here. There was a case. It was uh, the move. It was the week before move-in at Illinois State, and uh, it was. Uh, uh, so, so the situation was this: uh, this out of town, uh, these out of town friends were, were they, they they have them go to they have them stay night in the dorm room to get used to it uh, before they actually move in for the semester, and they wanted alcohol, so they got uh, two guys, two uh, guys, two black guys from Chicago. Uh, one was like 45 and one was like 25 to buy them alcohol. Uh, they brought the alcohol back and the, the girl that reported the rape uh, saw the guy put a pill in her drink. I don't remember what drug it was, but she saw him put the pill in the drink and uh, then she uh, proceeded to drink the drink and then she got raped by both of them. Uh, nope, nope, not her fault, not her fault. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that kind of prompted that thought in my head but how can uh, you be see. part of the effort to how can you be a part of the effort to eliminate sexual violence on college campuses stay sober stay sober or, or drink it that are driven recognize by recognize thoughts and attitudes <laughs> that are driven hush uh stay in populated areas avoid isolated locations stay party with friends or stay party groups. with friends or consider uh, the consequences debunk myths when i stick with more serious relate share what i've learned with others hang out with people who no, there's a hang out with people who don't support violence against uh, support violence against women. Again, there's no there's no rape myth in the West. It's it's uh, it's it's prohibited by law, and most everyone uh, uh, despises uh, the, the they consider the act evil. Uh, so yeah, this is just things people already know. And and if anyone's if anyone's uh, propagating myths, it's this uh, this bullshit training. Confidentiality and privacy. Oh, and reporting. Okay, we're going to skip pretty quickly through this, if at all, if at all possible. Amnesty. Uh, let's see. Confidentiality is the weakest form of protection a campus can. False. It's near post sensing control violation of the girls. Sure, I think that's probably right, yeah. Preserving evidence. Yeah, A victim obvious. of sexual assault should take steps to preserve... Don't yeah, change. Skip through this. I want to keep it as close to this video as close to. Three Write down as, as much as you can remember. The forensic. Ex yes. Ways to preserve evidence. I've yeah got 100 percent on this already. Uh, don't change your clothes. Write down as much as you can remember. There you go. Let's move forward. How do I report an incident? Colleges and universities. Because yeah, I do have some concluding thoughts after this. Reporting to police. Reporting to police. Okay, let's go. Reporting the crime is pressing criminal charge. Reporting frequent last questions. I have no questions.
Maintaining healthy relationships. Arrange the following list in the order that's most important to you. Can I just skip through this? Cool. An abusive <laughs> relation. Uh, what is intimate partner violence? Okay, here we go. What is intimate partner violence? Uh, when partner friends hurt themselves to gain control, it is a form of intimate partner violence. Forms of intimate partner violence include destroying property, putting a partner down, or embarrassing them. Yeah, all self-explanatory stuff, guys. This is just a, a blatant waste of time. Uh, okay, there's another citation. Intimate partner violence statistics. Oh, so here's some statistics on... Oh, let's see how, how often this happens. Uh, approximately 1 in 5 or 20% have been physically assaulted by a current or former intimate partner. Uh, so still uh, 20%, uh, 80% uh, of relationships don't have that, but you know, well, let's focus on the minority. Uh, okay, what do they want me to it do here? It is most common for males okay. to Hover, abuse their female partners. And answer yes or no, then click the arrow to answer the next set of questions. Most common for males to abuse their female partners, obviously, because they're fucking terrible. About 90% uh, of known victims of... People, people who abuse are psychos or crazy. People sure. who, if a person is really being abused, it is easy just to leave. It's not always. It's not always easy. Okay. Most men who abuse their partner grew up. Okay. Uh, most men. Okay. Most men. Most men who abuse their partner grew up in violent homes. Most, yes. Correct. And and uh, some of those violent homes. I mean, I mean, you, you consider uh, you consider some of the factors there. Uh, being raised in uh in bad households. I mean, uh, maybe the maybe the war on poverty. Uh, hit them and uh, the single mother. Um, obviously, it's possible that uh, the the husband abused the wife, or the the, uh, the the woman had multiple boyfriends that beat the shit out of her. I mean, there are a lot of factors here, but uh, uh, but yeah, growing up in a bad household, yeah, I can definitely uh, can definitely see that, and, and how government could be uh, could be related to that. Uh, let's see, domestic violence usually only happens between married couples. And domestic couples. violence usually only domestic. Actually, domestic violence. Okay. Oh, and there's more questions, isn't there? Damn it. People who, who are being abused often blame themselves for their abuse. Yes, most people in their relationship if their partner hits them. Yes, and... No. Incorrect. Actually, nearly 80% of women who've been physically abused... In okay, let's Intimate go. partner violence was not found to have a strong correlation to factors such as socioeconomic status or ethnicity. However, just studies this? have identified other risk factors associated... Well, I guess I'm wrong. Socio, uh, so it doesn't uh, correlate to socioeconomic status. You know, I I find that uh, find that hard to believe. I find that really hard to believe. Uh, risk factors for victimization and romantic relationships can include all of the above. And let's see. Almost done, guys. Do you feel nervous? Are you in an abusive relationship? Jesus Christ. Okay, Do you prefer not to answer. Your... <laughs> Does your Does your your has your partner to kill you? Has, has your partner suicide? ever forced you to have sex? Yes, no. <laughs> has your partner ever? Has your partner? If you answered yes to any of these, the best way to eliminate intimate partner violence is obviously yes. Get out of the relationship. Here obviously. are some of the possible. Re what have you already done or would be willing to do for someone in a abusive relationship? I can probably skip through this. Hell yeah. If you're in an abusive relationship, one of those important things you can do is get help. Okay, yes. Let's get let's get on to the the final section. Like domestic violence, stalking, stalking is a crime of power and control. Partner stalking is the largest category of stalking cases. Approximately one in six women in the United States has experienced stalking at some. Okay. <clears throat> Partner <clears throat> versus non-partner stalking. I don't see how that's important. Cyber stalking. The, the distinction, I mean. Uh, cyber stalking, okay. What are some things that you would be willing to do to protect yourself from cyber stalking? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, sexual assault survivors. Sexual assault survivors. Survivors of a sexually violent experience will react differently to their... Okay, yeah. Let's just get through 30 this. 30% of college women exposed to... Symptoms of depression include... Coping skills. Strong coping skills. Taking control of your recovery. Sexual assault survivors who perceive greater con If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, get help right away. This training thing is kind of depressing. As many as one in three. Really kind of depressing. As, uh, and also, I, I think this uh, uh, this kind of contributes to the uh, uh, the mean, I guess, the mean world syndrome, too. 
Uh, I mean, it's not it's not on it's not on TV, but this training might make women think they're more likely to get raped, which would make them more distrusting of men. Uh, which I don't think is a good thing at all for 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 uh, <laughs> planning on having the uh, uh, the human race continue. But uh, that's just uh, that's just me. Uh, so let's see, supporting survivors. If you know someone, what can you do? Oh, I actually have to answer these, don't I? Shit. Maybe. Nope. Nice. Take post test. Will be the same one as the last time. Okay. Minimum passing score of seventy percent. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Forms of intimate partner violence include uh, destroying, putting a partner down, in a sexually violent situation. Bystanders can all of these. You know, challenge social norms to support sexual violence. Every survivor of a sexually violent experience will react the same way. False. Which of the following are active bystander strategies? Uh, confront the person, call campus police, tell someone in a position of authority. Risk factors of victimization and romantic relationships can include all of the above. Uh, if you're in an abusive relationship, one of the most important things you can do is get help. True. A rape myth is a prejudicial stereotype or false belief about rape, rape victims, and rapists. True, how can a person become an advocate in standing against sexual violence by being part of the solution? Because that's just the most the most vague thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, being part of the solution. Uh, you, always, you always hear that. You always hear that. Uh, by showing respect and taking responsibility by speaking up. Ways to preserve evidence. Again, uh, don't change your clothes. Write down as much as you can. Amnesty means as a student reports an incident will not get in trouble for the violations that occurred at the same time as the incident. Great test and 100%. Am I done with this piece of shit? Oh my god. I'll just do it. I prefer not to answer. Get done with this quick. Let me provide my closing thoughts. <clears throat> is there a prefer not to answer? Okay, so th yeah, this is one, uh, this is a confidential survey and no one has access to individual survey responses. Survey responses go into a large anonymous database to help us improve our work in this field. Please be honest. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't necessarily uh, believe that at all. I think they could actually go in and look at the individual responses. Uh, I don't think it'd be very hard for them to do. Can I just skip this? Good. Oh, fuck. Uh... Just do unsure the neutral answer for all of them. Okay. This was a complete waste of time, and most everyone knows all of these things. Please stop. Okay. And there you have it. <laughs> I think. I hope. And... Are we there? Are we there? Uh, yes. There we go. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. Okay, so it took us about 40 minutes. They said the approximate time would take about 30, which means that the alcohol wise test takes about an hour and 20 minutes, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But, uh, but uh, nonetheless, nonetheless. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time, and everyone knows, most everyone knows all of these things. Uh, they're, they're making a problem that is, it's, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's, it's not a, rape is, is not a good thing, it's a violation of, of someone's, uh, of per, someone's person, uh, and obviously as anarchists or libertarians, obviously we believe in the, uh, autonomy of the individual, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, what they say, two and a half percent of men or something like that actually commit sexual assault. Uh, and uh, it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen all that often. Uh, they tout it as uh, something that's taking over college campuses and that needs to be stopped. Uh, and one is too many. Uh, well, you know, people always say that, uh, uh, that well, anarchy is a utopia or your utopian anarchist, anarchist society. Uh, but you know, uh, one is too much. It seems like they're being pretty utopian when it comes to, uh, to, to just violence in general, uh, more specifically in this case, uh, sexual violence. So, <clears throat> yeah, so it'll take about 40 minutes to do. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure you can understand why I, uh, kind of resent these things. Uh, and I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see, I don't know what happened with the, uh, alcohol wise test, because that was the most fun, uh, because they actually, uh, they actually asked you, like, how many drinks do you have, what drugs do you do, do you ever combine your drugs, uh, and they just asked a bunch of really invasive questions like that, so, 
I mean, uh, that one is a complete blatant invasion of privacy. Uh, because what I put in my body is no one, uh, no one else's business but mine. Uh, and apparently the university's too. Uh, but obviously I lied on that one too. But uh, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty ridiculous. Uh, but this is uh, just what you would expect from, uh, I guess the uh, the uh, SJW infiltrated, uh, the the uh, uh, leftist infiltration or continuing infiltration of uh, colleges uh, and universities. Uh, I will put this in the Adventures in Illinois Higher Education series, and I hope to have more additions, uh, more, I, I actually hope to have some stuff to write about uh, in class. It's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, the further I get through my uh, academic uh, career, uh, so to speak, uh, the less uh, blatant and uh, the less promotion that I've seen. So that is a good thing as far as my, uh, uh, my, my uh, ability to deal with it. Uh, but it's not so good for the Adventures in Illinois Higher Education series. So, uh, with that said, I don't have anything else for you guys. Uh, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I apologize for the length. I thought it'd take 30 minutes, but uh, obviously they can't be honest about anything. And I even skipped through a lot. So this could have taken somebody up to an hour if they really, really thought hard about it. Uh, so with that said, thanks for watching. And uh, make sure to check out the website, libertyunderattack.com. And make sure to tune in live every Sunday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. That is fprnradio.com forward slash listen dash live. And uh, that's all I have for you. And uh, laissez-faire, laissez-faire. I will see Get you next time. Get up off the ground!